Oh boy, I don't even know where to begin, to be completely honest with you. Welcome, everybody, to Big Boy Variety. You already know who I am, of course, I've said my name. And what week is it now? It's not week five anymore, I'll tell you that. What a wild week five in the NFL it was. Let me tell you, the schedules are now messed up and mumble jumbled and whatnot, and all sorts of craziness is going on because of COVID testing in the area, you know, well, the United States anyway. And so games had to be pushed back, games had to be made up and all this other stuff. And thus, we had, like, we had a Tuesday night game for the first time in a couple of years, and there's only been two of those actually, which is a crazy fact to me. I mean, it's not really that crazy. But it's a crazy fact that there's only been like two Thursday, Tuesday night games, not Thursday night, Tuesday night games since the 40s. Crazy, right? Anyway, let's start about some things on Thursday night. Um, the Bears, Tom Brady didn't realize it was fourth down. And the Bears are surprisingly four and one. Very, very surprising. Because, I mean, Nick Foles is just overthrowing everybody. If it wasn't Tom Brady getting sacked by Khalil Mack all night long, you know, Khalil Mack, you know, Mansell just throwing everybody all over the place and stuff like that. I mean, good God, Khalil Mack is just a force to be messed with on defense. But, you know, the Bears did just the bare minimum. Ha <laughs> ha. Did you get the joke? They did the bare minimum to get the victory against the Buccaneers. I mean, there was some terrible plays down the stretch for both teams. Like, I was wondering what in the world were they thinking? What in the world were the Bears thinking throwing it twice to give the ball back to the Patriots? I mean, not to the Patriots. Wow. To the Bucks. And then, you know, the Bucks, like, the Bucks on the possession before that, Punted the ball away and had, had that thrown it twice. So I don't I don't know what in the world was going on there. Let's talk about some of these Sunday games real quick. Um, you know, just the real quick ones, the real easy ones to talk about. First off, Texans finally got their first win under Romeo Cronell of all dudes. Man, man's is seventy plus years old, and he, you know, he has Deshaun Watson balling beating the Jags for their first win of the season. Congratulations, Texans. You're off the Ofer board. Can't say the same for the uh, Bengals, though. I mean, they just got absolutely destroyed. I mean, yeah, it, it, it was a rough, rough time, you know, for Joe Burrow out there. Got intercepted a couple times, you know, they're, they're, I mean, Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters were out there having a good day for the Ravens defense. And Lamar Jackson was Lamar Jackson. I mean, it was the Bengals. Easy work. Most of that game, the Bengals were shut out. So that defense still is something to be scary. And when that offense could click for the Ravens, whew, boy. Because they, they, they basically blew out the Bengals in the first half. Falcons... Falcons, they finally got rid of Dan Quinn. They finally did it. I know, right? Crazy. And the, and the Falcons still lose, by the way. They lose to the Panthers by a touchdown, which is kind of unfortunate. Falcons still winless. They got to find some answers soon. Cardinals easily take care of the Jets. And you know who's gone for the Jets? Le'Veon Bell. Jets said, okay, forget about firing Adam Gase. Let's release Le'Veon Bell, who made $28 million in about 17 games that he played for the Jets. And he only scored about four touchdowns. Let's 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 release Le'Veon. Crazy. Crazy that Big Ben is still on the football field. Y- y'all remember the Killer Bees, Brown, Bell, Big Ben, A.B. and Bell are sitting on the sidelines, you know, on their couches. Not on the sidelines anymore. They're on their couches now. So, Jets, 
it's going to be a long season for the Jets anyway. I don't know if they get a win this year. If they do get a win, that's great. But if you see them go 0-16, I mean, good God. There's just everything is wrong with the Jets organization. Everything is wrong with the Jets organization. You know who else has everything wrong? The Washington football team. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's great to see Kyle Allen in there, who then has to lead the game. For Alex Smith, yes, sir, he comes back after nearly two years of, you know, his leg broken two years ago. Life-threatening, almost. But it doesn't really matter in, in the grand scheme of things. Rams put up a whipping. Jalen Ramsey was out there doing some things on defense. A hard hit on Kyle Allen. That's why he left. A hard hit on him. And Jared Goff and company take care of that. So the two games that I did watch during the 1 p.m. window on Sunday were the Raiders surprising the Chiefs. I was very surprised that the Chiefs defense looked this bad. They did not look good. Three huge catches. One by Henry Ruggs, who returned. One by Hunter Renfro. A touchdown pass to Darren Waller. And um, I forget the other one. I, I already forgot the other throw. But it was, it was like three throws that Derek Carr made down the field. And, of course, Josh Jacobs took care of the rest. 40-32, it was really a bull. It was really, you know, kind of out of reach by the fourth quarter. Anyway, Raiders starting to flex their muscles. And they, they're looking pretty good right now. Raiders are looking pretty good. Defense did what it needed to do in the second half. Just held the Chiefs to absolutely pretty much nothing in the second half aside from that garbage time touchdown. There was, there was nothing really wrong with the Chiefs at all. I mean, yeah, Mahomes threw his first interception of the season to Jeff Heath. Crazy. Crazy that the Chiefs' win streak ends like that. It was a stunner. I'm not going to lie to you. And then, you know, it was the Travis Fulgham and, and Chase Claypool show down there in Pittsburgh. Claypool with four touchdowns, three of them receiving from Big Ben. Eagles defense could not stop him. Travis Fogel, 10 catches, almost 150 yards on touchdown. Mind you, Carson Wentz still threw two interceptions, and Pittsburgh's defense got two of them. And when presented with an opportunity to make a play that makes sense, the Eagles do not do that. And instead, you know, pissed the game away. They pissed the game away. Pretty sad. Pretty sad stuff right there. Eagles are out of the division lead because guess who's in the lead now? By Dallas Cowboys. It, you know, I mean, first off, fuck EDP 445. I mean, the guy's always been a piece of shit. He, he, he's trash. He, he's a scumbag. I mean, I just I, I watch his content for the funny stuff, for the funny stuff that he says. But other than that, dude's a scumbag. Like that. The, yeah, you can say what. Yeah, you can say. Oh well, Cowboys fans were were blah 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 about Wentz. But come on, man. You, you can you can't say that. You can't say it's a double-edged sword. Just like you can't say that about you know, you know Carson Wentz getting injured all the time. And I mean, I I always think about players getting injured and how rough it is, man. It is always rough to see players get injured. Dak Prescott's season is basically done. You know, and it's kind of sad, like really, really sad that his season had to end on basically just a regular tackle that misplaced his ankles. Or rather, one of his ankles, anyway. Rather sad, but, but, we do have the red rifle, Andy Dalton. What we do not have is a defense. No, we do not. What we do not have is an O-line. No, we do not. Because, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. 
how in the world did Jason Garrett come back to Big D and, and get this kind of traction? This is the best game the Giants have played all season on offense. Their offense is terrible. Daniel Jones still turned it over, by the way. Still had a fumble. Still had, you know. Daniel Jones played his best game of the season, despite the fumble. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. What I also don't get is that the 49ers got blown out by the Dolphins. I mean, Jimmy G came back into the lineup and threw two interceptions. Like, they were two terrible interceptions. And somehow, we have Fitz magic. I don't get it. It's crazy. But whatever. Dolphins get a victory. And it's looking like I'm going to be watching less 49ers games in the future. Um, I did watch the 49ers game, by the way. What I did watch was Browns Colts. Number one defense. Taking on the number one Rushing offense. Browns run for 200 yards a game. And, you know, despite, despite you know, things working out in both teams' favors, both teams really wanted to get this game away. I'm sorry, Baker. you got to clean up those turnovers, man. Phil Rivers is still throwing turn, still throwing picks. He's still throwing picks. Like, this was just some god-awful play from Phil Rivers. Just sad. Just sad, sad play. I don't even know how the Colts were still in it. I mean, aside from their defense. But, you know. Browns, they are now 4-1-2. Crazy, right? What a crazy season it is that the Browns are 4-1. What about the Seahawks? Now, this was during the end of the NBA Finals that I, I was, you know, I was on the NBA Finals first. Then, second half, Seahawks. Vikings. The Vikings jumped out to do a big lead early on, and then Kirk Cousins had a meltdown, had a meltdown, and just messed this game up for the Vikings. And the C the Seahawks came back, and then um, then um, I don't know what the world's going on. Let me tell you, like the Vikings had. A win sealed, but they they messed it up. They really, really did. You know, they went for two on one play. I don't think they got it. The Seahawks had that. You know, in not, in less than ninety seconds in the last, Russell Wilson is a beast. Let me tell you, if he's not with the MVP this year, I know somebody else might. But this man should win MVP of the year. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't care if it's the first five weeks. Give it to him. What a masterful drive he let down the field at the end of that game. Masterful drive. And uh, before we, uh, you know, before, you know, we talk about Monday night, which of course I didn't watch because it was a Monday night football game that didn't look very competitive. Let's talk about Derrick Henry. The church of Derrick Henry. He has baptized trash ass. Josh Norman again. Like, 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 good God. Josh Norman has always been getting humiliated, but goodness gracious, just retire, man. Ret just retire. Bills didn't even play that well to begin with, and they get blown out by the Titans on Tuesday night football. I know, right? Tuesday night football. Crazy, crazy time that we're living in. Tuesday night football, man. I suspect that there will be more games like this throughout the season. Um, with, you know, schedules being shifted and all. But yeah, Monday night, Michael Badgley, you know, in overtime. It was Justin Herbert's first Monday night football game by missing kicks. You can't trust NFL kickers. I say this on Twitter all the time. You can't trust them. You can't trust college kickers. You can't trust NFL kickers. You just can't. And uh, I don't know what Saints fans are still complaining about. I bet they're still complaining about Taysom Hill. I know that. You know, but that's not – that's – y'all are the ones that signed him to a big contract, Saints. You know, whatever. Saints are, are just kind of okay to me, to be completely honest right now. They're, they're, they're looking like a playoff team at times, but at the same time they're not. I mean, it's hard to watch, you know, the play, especially against the Chargers of all teams, who are just 
always afflicted with pain and misery. So yeah, week five is now over, and um, yeah, I'm still kind of messed up about the whole Dak situation um, because we don't have an O line, don't have a defense, and you know, you know, it's crazy. That all the Rams wins have come against the NFC East so far. There are a lot of good teams in the NFL, and there are a lot of bad teams. A lot of bad teams, especially in the NFC East. And there are some okay teams, too, and there are some teams that need to get their stuff together, like the Texans and the Vikings. Yeah, um, Titans basically bullied the, the Bills. I mean, it was a bullying, you know. You know Josh Allen was in complete passes, yeah. Nothing was getting going. The receivers were dropping catches that were easy catches and everything like that. The Titans just flexed their muscles, man. Ryan Tannehill had an easy day, you know. The Titans are still undefeated, and they basically beaten the COVID for now, at least, with players, you know, being out. But, yeah, that's going to pretty much do it. Week 5 is... Finally over, man. And week six, we'll talk about week six tomorrow in about 12 hours or so. And um, it's also going to be a rough week six. I'm telling you right now, there's not a lot on that Sunday slate that can really excite you. It's the same thing as this week because not a lot really excited me. I didn't even really want to watch the Steelers-Eagles game, but I watched it anyway, you know. And... You know, if you thought, you know, week five was crazy, I'm sure week six is going to be even crazier. So, yeah, with that being said, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Big Boy Variety out. Peace.